Hello, my name is Jesse, and today we'll be learning how to manage users in Nagios XI. And we'll go to the admin screen to begin managing users. Click the Manage Users button to get started. And the first thing you might notice is that there are two options. You can add a new user, and then you can add users from LDAP or Active Directory as well. Uh, new users are local, and these, of course, will be uh, imported from your LDAP or Active Directory server. These users do have the same sets of permissions that can be set, so that's important to note. Uh, we're just going to add a local user, so we'll go Add New User and you'll be presented with a pretty familiar dialogue. Whether you're a Windows admin or a Linux admin or you're just getting into IT, this should all be quite familiar. So we have the username field, which I'll just uh, simply make a user called test1, and then I'll give it the same password, test1. Of course, you have to enter the password twice. You can force them to change it at the next login. You can email them their account information, which uh, appears at the email address you specify in this email address field. Now that's all pretty straightforward. The next thing is creating a monitoring contact, which might be a little more obscure because it's more Nagios specific than it is, you know, system specific. So what a monitoring contact is, is it's something that's generated in your Nagios configs that you can attach to hosts and services. When you attach a monitoring contact called test1 to your hosts and services, what that says is that if something goes wrong on that host or service, the result will be emailed to the email address of user test1. So it's just a, a contact is associated with a user typically, and that user is the user that you know receives the email. So that's the idea, that's the relationship between a monitoring contact and a user. Uh, you can enable or disable host and service notifications. I, of course, will leave them enabled. Uh, we have several languages to select from. This actually does change the language of the interface. Uh, I can't read any other languages, so I will use English. Uh, you can select your date format and your number format as well. Now that's all pretty straightforward. In terms of security settings, these are uh, a little more difficult to get your head around just because they are Nagios system specific. They're not something you've probably run into before. And for that reason, we've included help dialogues that go ahead and explain what all of these things do. But in general, when you're making a new user, uh, you don't really want to tick anything unless you have certain goals in mind for that user. In general, you don't have to tick anything. And the reason is because when this monitoring contact is created and you assign the monitoring contact test1 to a host or a service, that automatically gives the test1 user that logs in visibility of that host and visibility of that host's services. So you can kind of say make users for your database administrators, only assign those users as contacts for the database servers, then when they log into Nagios XI, that is all they will see. So that's a very important point to realize in terms of the granularity that these options provide. Now, we can override that by checking see all objects. This will make this user capable of seeing all hosts and all services in Nagios XI. This option will make them able to reconfigure those hosts and services if they need to change certain options. This option will make them able to control all objects, uh, which means acknowledging problems, scheduling downtime, etc. So a little more advanced administrative functions. I would give this to maybe Tier 2 or Tier 3 help desk technicians. They can see and control the monitoring engine. They can access advanced features, and in terms of advanced features, they're all described right here, and I won't uh, go over them in too much detail, but that is an option as well. And then, of course, there's read-only access. So if I wanted the user to be an administrator, like the administrator I'm logged in as right now, I would just change this user to admin, which automatically ticks these five boxes and leaves read-only access unticked. So that's the only difference between user and admin are the boxes that are ticked. We've just included this shortcut for the sake of your sanity. So let's just make this test one user a basic user, but make them capable of seeing all objects. So I'll add user. You can see the user is added. Now in this user section, you can see all the user's emails. And of course, you can sort them and you know uh, search through the users, anything you'd like to. There are also some options over here to edit, clone, and masquerade as users. And I hope that gives you a good demonstration of the differences between users and admin users. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions about that process, feel free to contact us at the support forum. It's at support.nagios.com forum. Otherwise, feel free to check out our related content at the YouTube channel. Thanks.